so the vet is here we have to try and get a halter on Shady here again because he broke his the other day and got it off. Very scared of people, so uh, we're gonna get him in our makeshift shoot down there. season 2023 is officially underway. Midge of course is always ready to help make the hay for the horses. Right Midge. Right Midge. Uh, she's, she's gonna rest up before before we really get into the work. This is Nate's new, I think he called it a disc vine that he purchased over the winter. Try it out for the first time here. I just talked to Dad. And so bad as this winter was, it's way, way taller than what it should be. I think this is super tall. What would you say a couple feet? Yeah, I'm, I'm not very tall, but it's. It's up Two to your thighs. Yeah. Two and a half feet. <laughs> Look at how thick this is. Like. I'm gonna walk out here in the field. You can see how tall this is. It's like, there's my sweatshirt. It's all the way up here. And I think this is our smallest field. Okay, we've got a little visitor. Came out to say hi. Hi. Yeah. Oh, an older doggy, aren't you? What did you just get done doing? Cutting hay for the first time this year and for the first time with my new disc bind. What's so new about it? It looks old. It's new to me. Our friend gave it to us. I had to fix it. And as long as uh, he can use it, he let us have it. So that was nice. Who is that? Uh, Doug, Wade, Wade's dad. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. Oh. That's probably why Wade sent him a video. Probably. Oh, there he is. Ow. Normally that would have taken me an hour and a half. What would it take? 35 minutes? Yeah, it definitely seemed to go faster. Yeah. The hay was really thick, so it would go even slower with the old hay mine. So now the guys are going to like go look at it all over closely and look at all the parts that made it go so well. We really enjoy this kind of thing. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Gotta love them. I'm gonna go tad our hay. Why? So it dries faster. The tatter spins. 
and scatters the hay out in the windrow so it spreads it across the field so it dries faster. This is the one he just took all apart and repainted and everything. So I'm thinking he's a bit frustrated right now that now it won't run. What seems to be the problem? I don't know. I'm going to see if I can fix it by getting it. Can you just drive it down here? Yeah. Midge here to help. It's always good to have a supervisor on board. Right, Midge? Right, Midgey? Right, Midge? She says get to work. Right now she's inspecting the planting that they did in the fields here. She appears to approve. So this is the field that he cut yesterday. It's really tall and thick. Still, yeah, so when he cuts this with that, this is gonna like flip it up and around and help it dry faster, spread it out. He calls this his whirly cutter. I'm not sure if that's proper name for it. Is he doing a good job, Midge? Alright. Good deal. Good morning. Uh, Nate and I are about to go pick up a horse. And then there's another one supposed to be coming at like 10.15. But the one we're going to pick up is supposed to be pretty feral. So if you just wanna like let everyone know when they get here, we're hoping to be back by about 10. Little step MB. So, so we'll need a stall for the one at 10.15 and then I don't know if this new one will go in a stall or a catch pen, okay. well, but we'll see. And then there now, so. Right. Okay, perfect. Upon meeting Shady, it was clear that it would not be safe to put him into a stall. With the numerous volunteers and staff we have here, his reactiveness to people being anywhere near him would be a disaster waiting to happen. We opted to put him into one of the catch pens instead, which are much larger and would give both him and anyone who needed to go in there with him plenty of room to not be too close to each other. Doug is here with a couple surrenders he picked up this morning. Looks like we got a the Alfie and the donkey. Hi kids. Okay, because the donkey just followed the other one, so but it just didn't want to follow in. This is, I believe his name is Fantanamo or Phantasmo, something. Don't quote me on it. We'll get it. 
And then this little donkey here is Wilbur. <laughs> We're gonna get them in a stall and have the vet out to take a look. That's me, buddy. Come on. Oh, Wilbur, it's okay. Come here, come on, Wilbur. Come on, come on, honey. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. All right, now, can you try, Wilbur? Your friend's in there? Come on. Yeah, I didn't think so. Come on. It's okay. Come on. It's okay. Come on. It's okay. Come on. You're right, bud. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Move the butt. says something in there is going to eat me. Look at your buddies in one. He says, yeah, he's the dumb one. <laughs> okay, so scrubbing this part of your makeup. Too many people in front of you? There's your friend. Come on, bud. It's just a stall. Come on. Let's check it out. It's not a trailer. You're not going for another ride. Yeah, this is not a giant trailer. Come on, come on. 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 Come
going to pull me off the path. Oh, shoot. Shady, it's nice and shady for you. Looks like Shady got comfortable in the shade. It's not so spooky, huh, bud? Good job. So, the vet is here. We have to try and get a halter on Shady here again because he broke his the other day and got it off. I'm very scared of people. So uh, we're going to try and put a halter on him. We're going to get him in our makeshift chute down there. So we have used this chute many times. Many times we've used it. Many times we have succeeded. So Dr. Wolf is out here again. He's going to do some Coggins. Jim is still recovering. Yeah. Sounds but, like it's going to be a while yet. Yep. They always venture past. He's very scared. Poor guy. I'm not trying to be good boy. It's like, I'm not trying to be scary, just I'm here. Got him in our shoot. Oh, buddy. Calm down. Okay. We'll use a dumper. Mm -hmm. Calm down. It's okay. It's okay, bud. This may not go as easy as we thought. If he's got any sedatives. Mm -hmm. In Wisconsin, horses cannot change ownership without a current negative EIA or Coggins test. When horses are surrendered to us, ownership is transferred to ponytails. Most surrenders, though, do not have a current Coggins, and obtaining one can be very burdensome for a desperate owner. Yeah, right. So in order for us to be able to take in horses without a current Coggins, we must hold a license from the state of Wisconsin. This license allows us to take in horses without a current Coggins so long as we have them tested within 10 days of their arrival here. That can be a very difficult thing to accomplish, especially in a case like Shady's. So sometimes we have to push harder than we would like to, but we are given no choice. Almost though. Good. Oh boy. Did he touch it? He, he did. It. Good. Oh, are you going to eat it? Go ahead. Right. Okay. Put the 
tastes good. I eat the nougat. I eat it first before it eats me. Rawr. No, I can't go on the other side of my face. Get away. Buddy, calm, calm, calm. Just getting to be friends. <laughs> yeah. Get him? Yep. All right. You can be. There you go, oh, bud. Yeah, get that grain down. Two thousand years later. I can't believe he's still that alert. Mm -hmm. I think there's something behind me, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I get him to stop turning his butt to you. All right. Yep. So here we are with Shady. Uh, that was out today. We attempted to pull his coggins. Um, so we worked on that a bit today. It was not happening. He, we did get him sedated. Um, not in the best way, but we popped him in the butt a couple times. But he's just, he's too afraid. How the halter and lead rope got on him before I I'm at a loss and the person that we got him from said they were hand walking him every day which I we don't even see how that's possible even when he had the halter and lead rope on that was not a thing anyway so he's awake now move back into his pen so he can eat um we hung the halter there on his hay bag so he can make friends with it at this point, he's refusing. He's been eating down around it. Um, as soon as he sniffs it, he's afraid. So how we'll get that on him? We tried even when he was sedated. It was a no-go. So the halter is just hanging there to help him learn it's not a monster. monster. It's not going to hurt him. This is very representative of what a open door, full circle of life shelter deals with. 
He has massive scarring on his neck. We suspect from a lariat, but we don't know. He was advertised at the auction. We did not buy him from the auction. Somebody else did. He was advertised at the auction as a bred pony mare. Uh, turns out he was a stud. Again, enter the word Ryan's. Person that ended up with him managed to get him castrated. Still trying to figure out how. I'm guessing because the halter and lead rope was on him from the get go. But it's off now. This boy is terrified. I know he doesn't seem it right now, but if I walk in the pen, it'd be totally different. You can see his avoidance of his food because of the halter now. I'm hopeful when I come down here tomorrow morning that that hay bag is empty. And he's made friends with his halter. That's not a monster, buddy. Somebody was a monster to him, though. Well, as hoped, Shady has made friends with his halter. And is eating. What do you think, buddy? So untrusting. Polly is here today. He's going to trim the feet on the newest owner surrenders, and we're also going to use our stock for the very first time. No founder in that one. No? No. A little stretching, but no founder, so I think it was safe just in time. Just gotta teach you how to walk on your toe and not. Anyone who might ask, like, why is it okay for to have taken off that much? Because I know people out there are just like, you have to go back a little bit at a time. Well, being there's no founder and no rotation, you don't really need to increment baby steps. You can take it off. It's going to do more worse by having him rocking back like that on all that suspensory versus taking him back right away and getting him standing how he can. Go, bud. Good feet. It's tiny quarter, tiny quarter horse feet. So she turns out a little bit. Yep. They're saying she's lame at a trot, and I've seen her running around. She doesn't feel lame. But they also said she does step on the outside of the right front first, which she does, mm -hmm. and you can see it. So I wanted you to let's take a look and see. Try to balance her or shape her or something? To try to, like, why she does that. And it might just be confirmation or whatever, but. To walk her down. Looks like a little bit of a fun question. Quarter horse feet, 1,200 pounds on a saucer. It's only six. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I can get a picture of that. You want me to clean it out? Yeah. That's good. That's fine. Only a confirmation issue, but it can't be fixed, but it can be maintained. Best thing for ones like this is, you know, some shoes, some corrective shoeing. So it's kind of like what Manicotti had going on. This a is exactly bit. how his foot grows. Okay. Yep. That's what I had done. And then we just put so with Manicotti, we have the um, what I do is I put a bar shoe on his ring bone foot and a regular shoe 
on his good foot, but I just make sure it's the same thickness. Sure. And that's that's how we got him running. It can't be fixed, but it can be maintained. Um, so like what we did with Manicotti is I put an put a bar shoe on his ring bone foot and then his other foot just put a normal shoe, but make sure it's the same depth. So he's not off. But and that's when we got him sound at a trot. Mm -hmm. So are you thinking maybe we need to do shoes with her or just try what? this first? Let's trim her first and then Lame. Yeah, there's no reason to put shoes on if she's not lame. I put the shoes on Manicotti because he would, at a trot, he'd get like, ugh. Yeah. You know, look like someone shot him in the shoulder. But now he's, that one day we let him out and they were taken off down the driveway. And she's screaming, fence. You really walk on that. how much we had to take off the one side in comparison to the other to get him balanced. What's going on in that bulb? Just, Just the frog has shifted. Looks right like you got cut on something maybe. Yeah. And it doesn't stink. I just about cut my guts open. <laughs> that did be give, giving me a C-section. Up next, we're doing Lisa and Gretel. They had the hoof casting done on their feet a few months ago. Polly has checked them a few times since he's come out and he hasn't need to do any trimmings or anything like that. But we have them in today and we're gonna see if Polly notices anything new or if they just need a simple trim and can be on their way. Let's not do what we did that one time. Oh. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, now just be nice. We don't, we don't have a very good track record. That's the foot that was hooked right? Mm-hmm. How's it look to you? A lot better. It filled in nice. It's got some time to completely fill in, but... She's got a sound on it. Good. That's what we want. All right, don't kill him. I don't like that f***ing tail swishing you're doing either. She's good. Perfect. You're not gonna eat me, are ya? Oh, here you go. You got a big hoof. Big hoof. I think that one had it done. Yep, this was it was done right in there. And that's gonna be pretty well grown out after today, I feel. It's not a hundred percent, but it's the it's. I'd say he's good to ride. Like, what would you say to someone who's potentially going to adopt, as far as like following up with that and keeping it growing out good? Like, are they going to? The hard part. The hard part's done. Everything's grown out. Maybe put a set of fronts on for protection for the summer. If you're going to trail ride them, they are standard breads. They should have shoes on anyways on the fronts. Maybe throw a two degree wedge on so they're not walking on their heels, but they're good to go. They're ready. Overall, just keeping up with the trimming properly. Yeah, just, just have a good farrier and keep up on trims, keep them on a six to eight week ro you know, routine and do shoes, pull them in the summer, or pull them in the winter, leave them on, you know, late spring, summer, early fall, pull them the rest of the year. And so it's not a lifelong problem nope. we're gonna have or they're gonna continue casting? No, okay. nope. It's just like when you break your leg, you cast it and when it's better, you 
run around and do it all over again. Harry is going to be the first user of our stock. This poor old gal is foundered like a son of a bitch at one point. Sonny, you're gonna feel different. different. <laughs> Yeah, her feet have grown like this so long. Now that they're finally trimmed, we gotta train them to grow back down. Oh! At least you got teeth. <laughs> your other little buddies down there. Open your mouth! What happened? Her founder so bad her soul is splitting oh away from God. the um do we get some wrap? Like what? Vet wrap. Just vet wrap. Her soul is completely well, let's trim around that. You gotta have something to stand on though. So we're gonna leave that side long. This might be a hoof casting contendent depending on what you want to do with her. She needs That's to fine. be stalled. I don't see why she can't be stalled here. Okay. Okay. I'm just, I'm hoping that soul isn't separate, that coffin bone ain't pushing through. I don't think this, I don't think it's that bad, but. So. I think we'll be okay with tape. What do we do? This? Yeah. No, we'll leave this on. Leave it on. Leave it on. Until? Until it falls off or if it stays on until I get back. Okay. She might need um, shoes just to get that pressure off. But She's got her soul is separated from the whole hoof wall hoof casting anyways because I got a couple other horses that need it so so just leave it for now and check it out when you get back yeah